Welcome to Center of Light on this Thursday night. Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement Radio to ignite the soul and the transformation station. Looking forward to this interview with my friend, Nick Pereira. Now, let's see if I can get this right. Nakula, Nakula Dos. We're going to be talking about Mission Seems impossible. Nick and I are going to get into that in just a little bit. How I came up with this title, something that Nick and I are, excuse me, Nakula and I are sharing in the form of a parallel experience about certain things. I'm going to wait to save that question. I want to bring my brother on the air. Center of Light Radio, uh, September 21st and 22nd, Memphis, Tennessee, Four Points Spiritual Expo. Phenomenal event, huge event, keynote speakers, Larry Flaxman um, from Discovery Channel, Ancient Aliens, other programs as well that you, you've probably seen them many times. Um, myself, keynote speaker, going to be speaking about radical transformation crossing the bridge to the soul. Push you right into the moving river. Then you get a glimpse, a greater aspect of who you are. Then it's up to you to do the work. Now that it comes believable, because you caught a little peek of the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Dr. Rita Louise is going to be a keynote speaker. Lynette Marie, keynote speaker. There's another keynote speaker. Forgive me who you are. I don't remember your name. Vending booths everywhere. Spiritual teachers everywhere. Readers all readers as well. Uh, speakers all day long. Um, gemstones of every sort. Healing modalities of light. Healing modalities of sound. $20 for both days, $15 per day. If you're from out of town, make a road trip. Come a night or a day early, come see me play music, which I play tonight at Lafayette. Excited about that. But uh, I play music all the time. Come see me on Friday night. We wake up, go eat breakfast, head over to the Point Four Point Spiritual Expo. You can find more about that event at Circle of Chi. That's Circle of QI on Facebook and the Internet. You want more information about that event? Contact me or Victoria Smith, who I really appreciate, at Circle of Chi. That's Circle of QI. We're going to have a speaker panel on Sunday at 6 o'clock. I'm going to be one of those speakers, a group of us, the Spiritual United Nations, if you will. We're going to unite. We're going to unite and do what's best for at least what we can do for this nation, putting our think tanks together and coming up with a plan for future events. Be a part of this phenomenal event that is going to take place. Let me see if I have any other notes before we get down to Center of Light Radio Beeswax. Um, there are some bonuses that are associated with the Spiritual Expo. You can go to fourpointsexpo.com. Workshops will be posted by April 22nd. Uh, this might be, oh, one moment, one moment, one moment. Please be sure to like and follow the Four Points Expo on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to stay in touch with upcoming events, promos, and more. There are certain codes that you can um, find and insert when you buy your ticket. You get a few dollars off kind of thing. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be crazy powerful. And there may be a surprise God-realized man avatar to show up. I'm working on that. Right? <laughs> Please feel free to share this to you all. In this form, you'll find a group of links. One of those is to my YouTube channel. Please click it, subscribe. If you find any interviews there that you resonate with, leave me a comment. Hey, Keith, i like more about this subject. I'll give you what you want by simply asking. Give me some thumbs up. Also, check out some of the movie links, of my movies, my creations, all in this forum. Check them out. There's also a donate link. I do this work because it's my heart. I don't require anything but you to be present. Together, we shake hands and we do this wonderful dance called humanity or life. Things are changing. Nick will attest to that. I did get a worldwide distribution publishing deal with John Hunt's Publishing. The next stage is the cover. Boy, am I excited. Stay tuned for that. This is something I've been waiting for for many, many years. Um, so I can continue my mission, which some years ago seemed impossible. 
No joke. We'll take a short pause, and I'm going to play a song written by Lavento, Lavender Soul, my spiritual band. We're coming up with a new album. We started working on a new album uh, Monday. Uh, Bernard and I got together. It's going to be comprised of members of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. This is a song called See the Light. Tonight's presentation interview is Mission Seems Impossible. But if you listen to the bass line throughout the beginning of the song and the chorus, it's the bass line for Mission Impossible. <laughs> How cool is that? Stick around. I'll be right back with my guest, Nick Carrera, Nakla Das.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Yana Vai here. Let's get down to some Center of Light radio business with my guest tonight. Met him a few years ago. I liked him immediately. We connected immediately. Nakula Doss, born Nicholas Pereira, is a member of an ancient spiritual order called Bhakti, Bhakti Yogis, better known as Hare Krishnas. Nakula is on a mission to spread happiness throughout the world through the yogic way of life and spreading the understanding of unity and diversity. I'm going to do my best to announce this web address. It's www. I'm multitasking, forgive me folks. www.patreon.com slash Nocula Doss. What I am going to do is post that in the feed forum right now. Make sure you check out Mr. Nick's work. Uh, let me do that again. There we go. What's up, brother? Not. <laughs> hey, man, what's happening? <laughs> what are we doing, dude? What is what's happening to us? Because you, you look at you and me, we have the booty ash on our head. <laughs> we have <laughs> we have jumper malas around our neck. We have changed our name from Nick to Nakula Dos and Yanava. Yeah, what is becoming of us? You and I came up with this interview idea about something that was happening with you, and I agreed. Something like this mission, this thing that we feel driven to do, and there's no way out of this. It's very exciting, but somehow it's starting to get a little scary. That's why I named it Mission Seems Impossible. What's happening, brother, for you at least? Well, I, it's getting real right like it was it was always it's getting real like <laughs> like it was always something in the future one day i'm going to preach a spiritual message i i um have a, a, had a great experience with god uh being a hari krishna has been a great experience um and i just want to share that i've become a happier person but what's getting real is saying all these things openly, knowing that there is a large percentage of people who just absolutely have no value for this conversation. But more and more people are starting to see the value of this conversation. And it's been a conversation for the ages, you know, the conversation of God, the conversation of happiness, the conversation of purpose. And so... For me, it's getting real because I'm doing it and uh, and I'm getting great response. And yet I've got I've gotten some hairs and some naysayers, which is unusual because up to now I played it pretty safe in everything I've done. That's what's up. <laughs> I'm digging that shit, isn't it, man? Put some more on the cracker. <laughs> you know, yeah, and it's like I yeah. think another reason for me, at least, and I think it parallels with you, is that yes it's definitely getting real do you feel a push inside a pressing a nudging forward kind of thing when you like you know i'm good where i'm at right now i like the message i like what i'm doing it's got power it's got impact but there's something saying you need to step <laughs> do you feel yeah that? Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, I think I feel like it was more forced upon me. Like I was doing the Freedom Pinners Club, which I still have, and uh, I'm very grateful for uh, you know helping spiritually on based entrepreneurs, and I'm still doing that. Uh, but launching out the actual mission that has been in my heart for so long is like it's like a flower blossoming. So the, the budding of that flower is taking place right now. And I think that's, you know, life itself looking to expand, looking to experience, looking to, uh, you know, uh, for me, it's, it's the, the pull of God, you know, like we was Krishna, like we identify with God under the, under the form Krishna, right? 
uh, we, as Hare Krishnas, we, you know, study Bhagavad Gita and uh, that's the word of Krishna. And so people are, I think, all over the world that however they're connected to God, whether it's through Christianity or whether it's through the Islam faith, the Islamic faith, or, you know, they're chanting Buddhist mantras. The point is, is that there's a large percentage of us who are being called to step up and talk about unity in diversity and talking about getting back to natural living and talk about being happy again in a world right now that's very turbulent. I love that you are into the picture, the, the idea it's an unfoldment like a flower right above your head, sir, if you look. You see that lotus flower see the next lotus to the center of light. Flower. So yeah. it's truly an unfoldment. The lotus is always a beautiful thing. Yes, and I love that you stated there's unity and diversity. Um, that's what humanity is. You know, people get hung up on labels. They get hung up on arrogance. This way is right. This way is right. And I think everyone in the world, no matter you walk, talk, creed, code, or sect, everyone is searching for something. Even They may not even know they're searching. You can see it in their eyes. Everyone is searching for something. And I think what they're searching for uh, comes in the guise of humanity getting along and supporting each other and writing this unbalanced world. Well, I think that, that ultimately we're, we're, we're looking for connection and yeah. deep experience. We're looking for happiness, but we don't know what it is. You know, I, I've got this thing I want to... Uh, uh, talk about maybe a little bit later, uh, but I've got this thing coming out called the happiness scam. <laughs> Let's and, do it. Yeah, and and I'm I'm going to be sharing in this 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 little video that I that I recorded today, and we're just putting it together. And I, I'm going to be sharing why happiness is a scam. That that at some level has been at an unconscious level we've scammed ourselves and i think that there are some people that are conscious of it and and, and using it uh to gain financially so we've been taught essentially that happiness and pleasure are the same thing so we seek happiness through pleasure through through satisfying the senses of the body drugs alcohol sex, all of these type of um, sense pleasure activities, I'm not demonizing and I'm de and I would be a hypocrite because I mean I smoked weed most of my life. It's something that you know that cravings and struggle with, right? It I've uh, I've I've done all kinds of alcohol and look, I was in the music scene in my early twenties touring, right? <laughs> Let's just say everything that comes along with that scene I've I've can I've been in and done, right? Is that and new information so, for me, sir? Is that new information for me that you were in a touring band? Did we ever talk about this? I don't know that we did because it's actually something I never really talked about a lot. But it's Ooh. it's a it's actually a very it's actually a very I was a hip hop artist named Token, T O K apostrophe N. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Dig I it, my bro. I, I actually released a record, an independent record. I was trying to look around to see if I had a uh, a copy. I should get a copy to hold it up for people. Um, 13th Floor was the name of the album. And I released, yeah, yeah. I toured Canada twice. I mean, I wasn't anything big, but I was like, I got out of my basement and I got on tour and we sold a bunch to wreck. And I got to open up for some really cool dudes and we shot a cool music video, uh, you know, it's called breaking the game It's still on YouTube, right? You know, and so the point point is this is that I I've, I've lived that life that material life I've lived it. I and and I get its appeal. I totally get its appeal and uh, and at the same time I found myself just not happy like why am I not happy? And then I tried doing it with entrepreneurship where I realized it was the same thing. I was searching for this, like, you know, this thing to fulfill me. And eventually I, I really, really came to a realization that uh, I have to look in a different way. And that's when I started going down this, the spiritual road and the spiritual path. And I studied all kinds of different spiritual 
practices. And I tried my hand at all kinds of different spiritual practices. And for me, the path ended up being, you know, the path of Krishna. I really resonated with Krishna. I, in fact, after I had a very, um, you know, uh, a very uh, spiritual experience, uh, the, the Krishna mantra came for me. But also what came for me was unity and diversity. It was the, the, the philosophy of oneness and difference at the same time. And once we understand that, we it's it's an all inclusive, it's an all inclusive consciousness. That's God consciousness. That's divine consciousness. That's Christ consciousness. Whatever you want to call it, it's the same consciousness. And is that, you know, to get to that place, though, we have to start. Like for me, it was about choosing happiness first. I chose to be happy in my life, but realized in that choice, I had to I had to come to a realization that one, I wasn't happy. Like that was the first thing I had to realize, why am I not happy? I, I have every advantage of life. I mean, I come from a good family, a great mother, a great father, a loving brother. I, I have, um, you know, I, I have a good uh, uh, education and I have every opportunity that a kid growing up in Toronto, Canada and Calgary, Canada has. Yet, I still found myself not happy. And so even in the music scene and everything like that, uh, then it was the, then it was the entrepreneurial scene and just, but, but for so long, I've known that really I'm here to share a spiritual journey. And actually I made a deal with God, eh? I made a deal with God a number of years ago because <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur and I make deals, right? So I approach God as I am. All right, let's, let's negotiate, right? Like God is someone to negotiate with. But anyways, this is me in my day. And so I'm like, let's negotiate. I'm saying, okay, here's the deal. I will use my life as an example of spiritual growth. And you will take care of me in an abundant way. And so I, I made this deal with God. And, uh, and then I realized that I was hiding in that deal. So I made this deal and God is honoring this deal completely. But I, but he's also like, yeah, but you're not playing like you, you're, you're still need to grow a lot. And it was like, oh, okay. How do you want me to grow a lot? Well, I gave you a mission. Like I want you, you, you've learned how to be happy you have other things to work on but one thing you've got is how to be happy share with people how to be happy because when you're happy it's a platform for deeper spiritualization spiritual realizations but at first you got to be happy i like your new word bro bro spiritualization spiritualization i love it right let's coin which it which is spiritual let's... realization right <laughs> Spiritualization. I, Spiritualization. I love it. Yeah, because you have to you have to be at least in the in the happy vibe to then have like to realize like what is life about? Like what actually is life about? Is life about just these the pleasure and just eating, sleeping, defending, having sex? This is the four activities that we're mainly engaged in, right? We eat and we sleep and we defend how do we de defend we defend one we defend now with bombs and we defend also with gossip and we defend with with over overwork these are all ways of defending our and what are we defending mainly our false identity or ego that is caught up in all of this and has identified with it has become attached to it and so when we, when, we, when we choose, when we first realize that we're not really happy in that, then we go, well, how do I find happiness? And then it becomes a journey inward. It becomes like a question of like, well, who am I then? If I am not happy, who am I that's not happy? Who am I that's not, who is this, this part of me that's saying I'm not happy? 
oh shit, son, it's the soul. <laughs> right? You it's know? that easy. I swear to you, Nick, I, I'm so digging your dialogue. It's that, who is this me? Who, you know, I say, if I was to ask anyone, you know, what's this? You'd say, well, that's my arm. <laughs> well, who is this me that owns that arm? Who's in control of this? It's arm? the There's landlord. <laughs> yeah. It's the landlord. And so in 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 bhakti yoga we say um that inside of us there's the soul, Atma, and then there's Paramatma, which is the super soul, or God within your heart. And God within your heart is within my heart, with his in every being, every living entity, not just human beings, but the animals and that, and that soul is permeating through the trees and the plants and the air and the birds. And even that, which you think is dead is actually still vibrating and moving with, with God energy. So, so there's only one heart, true it's heart. God? Yeah, yes, well, we and, are that's a, and that would be a doorway, wouldn't it? That would be a cosmic, a, a divine doorway. Totally, to different dimensions that are within yourself. Right. Right? So, so you know, I learned all of this and, and then realized I, I needed a, a practice. Some, sa, some sadhana in yoga, right, the Sanskrit word sadhana, right? Practice, some kind of path. And I believe personally, because I've read so many other things and have talk, talked to so many different types of people, I, I love people of all kinds. I love, man, I, I'm cool. I'll kick it with an atheist. I'll kick it with a devotee. I'll kick it with, you know, just anyone, right? <laughs> and just And just chat and just be like, yo, let's just meet on a level of like, Let's just get let's let's just let's chat happiness, and I personally believe that for myself, once I learned how to attain certain types of happiness, then deeper spiritual realizations, deeper focus, deeper meditations, deeper commitment, deeper surrender. Right, if that's a thing, deeper surrender. I don't know, surrendering more and more. Letting go, letting go, letting go. And some of y'all that are tuning in know exactly what I'm talking about. And some of y'all want to know what I'm talking about. And some of y'all have no idea what I'm talking about. All right. And that's okay because if you're tuned into a show like this, then you're in the you're absolutely in the right place. But the more that you surrender, then the more that you just make decisions based upon what your heart's calling. And what you'll find in that is uncertainty. But you'll feel certain in that uncertainty. That's how I feel right now. I, because I'm also willing right now. I think for the first time I'm fully committed in my life and willing to do whatever it takes. Like I was like, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. I've preached entrepreneurship for a long time from a sense of like entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is only the way for a certain sect of society and people. The reality is most people, entrepreneurship is not the way. But yoga, this is universal. Yoga is literally for everyone, and I wanted a way to reach everyone, 7 billion people. I said, how can I help 7 billion people improve their lives? We must have a universal system. And we have to understand, so, and there's no such thing because we have so many diff different types of religions, and even within the yoga world. You know, we all see it a bit differently, but can we see God within it? Can we see the unity in diversity? If we could see unity in diversity, then people would be allowed to express themselves as they wish in a beautiful way because the world is diverse. Look at nature. It's diverse. We are part and parcel of nature, not separate from it. So we act and abide by the same rules and laws. And nature in itself is diverse and evolves and shifts, and so do we. But there's an internal part of us that never changes. It's unchangeable, unmovable, eternal, was never born, will never die, and it is part and parcel of the ultimate reality. The ultimate of yoga 
is not a tight booty. <laughs> right? The, <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate of yoga is not to sell out your yoga class and studio. The ultimate of yoga, the purpose of yoga is to bring people back to their divine consciousness. Now in bhakti yoga, particularly in the in in what I practice, we do that through through worship uh, of Krishna. But our spiritual master would say, you could chant Jesus Christ. If you sincerely follow Jesus Christ, you'll get there. See, there are many ways up the mountain. The point is, if you are, you are in a, you are in a practice, how do you know if your practice is actually working? Your love for God should be increasing and your material fever should be decreasing. Dig That's that. how you know. That's how you know. If your love for God isn't increasing, I was sitting in temple one day and the teacher said, the teacher said, if you're not getting happier in your Krishna consciousness. So in your journey to understanding God and knowing God and loving God, in that journey, you should be gradually noticing that you are getting happier. He said, if you are not getting happier, then there is something wrong with the practice. Something, I totally agree. Something that came across my experience a while back is, if you look out and about in your life, whatever aspect of your life there is no joy, you're not seeing God in it. That's right. Joy is the evidence of God. Yeah. It's the source of joy. Hey, hey, done. End the show. Right? <laughs> Click, that's right. Because 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 the source is is the seed, right? It's the seed of life. Everything comes from the seed. So we also come from the seed. And everything comes from the seed. So when we see that seed in everything, we would say when you see Krishna in everything, you may say when you see Christ in everything, you may say when you see Allah in everything, when you see Jehovah in everything, when you see Govinda in everything, when you see, right? Then you're seeing God in everything. And if you love God, then your love extends to everything. And how do you become happy in this world? You have to be, you have to exude happiness. You have to see the good in everything. You cannot see negative and then expect to have a positive life. You cannot see bad and expect to have a good life. So you have to always see what is good and best in the situation. Now, sometimes you may be dealing with a shitty situation. I dig that. I get that, right? Life in this material world is challenging. And, and another part of the happiness scam is that we're fronting like it's not. We're putting on a show like it's not. We're put, but it is, it is. People are actually really suffering. Like, you know, like, like look at the world. And I'm not saying it's all all doom and gloom. There's a lot of good. We have to see the good in everything, but it doesn't mean we're, we have to see the good even in the places where we struggle to see the good. Because that's this is the center of light radio, so we could say that is how we bring light. <laughs> well, right? yeah, because we, if you have a situation, let's call the situation you come home from work late in your house, the lights are off. That's your situation. It's dark, a dark situation. Right. Be it a, you parallel that, parallel that to something in life. If you can't see down the way and there's no illumination, you know, lots of things can happen. You can stub your toe, break it, you know, trip and fall, trip and fall. All these are very analogous. So if you're not looking for happiness or the source of light in a dark situation, you're just going to fumble around and bump all over the furniture of life. Totally. It's going to be a very rough ride. Right. And for most of my life is a very rough ride. But my life is smooth and now, and it doesn't mean I don't have challenges. And it doesn't mean, like I said, I'm no guru. I'm no like Swami. I bow to the Swamis, right? I, you know, right? So I'm just a guy, like a regular dude. You man. are like, a passionate soul. You are passionate. You are yeah. on fire. 
I'm just saying there's many of us out there doing that thing. But speaking for you, sir, you, you are on fire. You have this drive in you that won't quit. In fact, it won't quit. It does it when you're sleeping. Oh, dude, I don't stop. I know. Man. I don't stop. And I love it. In fact, when I stop, I feel all like... So I know that I, I have to, to, to keep myself engaged in a lifestyle that, that channels that passion in a proper way. So that's for me became the yogic lifestyle. And again, when I say yoga, I'm not just talking the physical postures. I'm speaking of the lifestyle, the diet, the, the, the sleeping patterns, the, um, the discipline and focus that comes with yoga that allows you to over time really master yourself and self mastery leads to self realization and self realization is god realization right it's realizing you're in it to win it and you're just simply in it to win it yeah well you got to be like why do it if you're not in it to win it like again that's, the, that's what i'm saying let's get real right like like what are we doing are we fluffing around here on on you know and just like or are we going for actual love of God? Are we going for this? Are we, are we actually brave enough to make the personal changes that need to be made in our life? This is the, this is the real, this is the real work. This, know, this is, this is work. it. I'm, 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 it's not a dress rehearsal. Like, like, no, it's not a dress rehearsal. No, it's not a dress rehearsal. And, 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 and it is not, it is like, look, like this is, this is your opportunity to really see who you are. <laughs> And what are you doing, right? What, what are you doing with it? And and that's what I said. Like, and you got to find a path. You have to find a way. And this is where you got to know, like, like you got to get committed. And so the more you get committed, the more you understand your philosophy. Look, I was just talking to one of my mentors. I had a beautiful two-hour conversation with a lady named Nicole Jansen, which I should totally introduce you guys. Because she's right. a she's a wonderful Christian woman that totally gets like this. I'm a Hare Krishna, but I credit her, a Christian woman, to turning me back onto God. Dig that. <laughs> she, she she never see on our spiritual master Srila Prabhupada never tried to convert anyone. He just said, you must know God and love God. He didn't say, become a Muslim, become a Christian, become a this, become a that. He said, love God, know God. Jesus said, love God, know God, right? God conscious people don't direct people to themselves. They direct people to God, right? And we need those kind of leaders in the world to step up in a big way. At least that's what I'm, what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I guess we'll see how it goes. And again, I'm being like just open about my journey and just saying, hey, come try it out. You know, come dig it. <laughs> you might Everyone, like it. Keith Anthony Blanchard here, Yanava, hanging out with Nick Pereira. Uh, let's see if I can get this right. Nakula Das. We're having a joyful <laughs> ride tonight. I get to hang out with someone I see truly as a peer. We're basically having a spiritual beer in some cool little joint, just chit-chatting, and you happen to be a part of it. Um, since Nick and I are both dressed up in our India garb, we're going to keep it a little on the India side with some Lavender Soul, my spiritual band. A song called Time for Change. Nick recently mentioned, Nakula did, a moment ago, about this time for change. Every Supposedly every 26,000-ish years. That window opens. This window is open greater than it's ever been. This is it. You are at Disney World. <laughs> Time for a change. Enjoy.
When my world is dry Oh, so dry In the summertime I won't have no water Oh, the way It's a little bit Harder Stars leaving my hands to fate. That's all I've got. All I've got in the summertime. I won't have no water. Oh, wait, it's a little bit harder. Flagship Mother Earth, welcome to Center of Light, all my beautiful family, Yana Vait, Ya Heart Will God, Na, the mind, the good part of the mind, reasoning, discernment, backbone, Va, action, Yana Va, sacred seed syllables of the authentic soul, self, Are you listening? Are you seeing way beyond the capacity of your ears and your eyes? It's a different way of taking in information. It's all seeing. It's all hearing. Hearing with your total self. I feel everything around me. I've expanded my awareness. 
by mere intention, if I ask you to focus on the taste in your mouth, your awareness hones in on it, and that's your experience. Now I want you to focus on the temperature of your skin. Now I want you to focus on the sounds you're hearing all over. My voice sounds in the background. So your focus, your awareness went to these different points of reality, dimensions, if you will. Can you sit with yourself in such a way that you can experience all those at the same time? The taste in your mouth, the temperature on your skin, the sounds around you. You get a glimpse of the broader you. And that's where the work lies, at least for me, with my work, Radical Transformation, Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. Nick, I, welcome back to the show, my dear friend. I wanted to ask you, sir, do you experience this? And I'm open, humbled to some of your insight and your kind in words. When I do my personal presentations, I come up with these crazy titles, these double entendre titles, and I make it a multifaceted message even before I even start the broadcast. But Nick, once I get into the, the presentation, a lot of it's information. I'll play some Sadhguru videos or whatever spiritual master. I'll read from my book. And then towards the back half of the show, I go into, I don't like the word channel, I go into vessel mode. I don't try to imply that separation from me from spirit, excuse me, it's a way of humbling myself as the key so I can take this in. When this begins to happen to me, sir, I understand we grow over the last two year, two and a half years for me when this all started as far as these live feeds. Now when I sit here, Tomorrow night, I'll do a presentation called <laughs> Humans, the Instruction Man You Will, right? And I got the uh, Da Vinci Man, <laughs> all these knuckleheaded things. But when I go into Vessel Mode, Nick, there's something like a lion, to use a word, something that wants to push so hard. I find myself, I'm going to use the word resisting because it is the correct word, but I think the better word tone down will be I'm holding back do you restrain yourself and if, if for me truly brother it's not about wondering what people think I think that's the exciting and scary part we talked about because like you said this is real yeah um, I used to but I don't anymore and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today right so I was holding back and I was playing in a game that I was safe for me. I was teaching spiritual entrepreneurs how to generate sales. And like I said, I still do that because I've developed a whole system and curriculum and workshops that are all available. Uh, and so what what's happened is over the last couple of years, I've been able to grow my business to a point where I can now help and support a lot of people in that way which is uh, uh, without giving up too much of my time because I've been able to create a curriculum. And what I can really now do is step into my full mission, which is teaching happiness through yoga philosophy and through yoga philosophy, helping people realize God within their life. And in this way, um, I am now, one thing is that I, I've known that this is the mission this is the calling, but the generating sales piece was safe. So I was holding back knowing that having that pull, come on, you made a deal like you want to speak, you want to share. You're, you're actually very excited to share with the world what the spiritual path can do. Right. Like I'm really excited to share that and say, hey, like 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 this is something that we should honestly be taking a look at at a large scale, not just like, oh, that's some fluffy woo woo stuff over there. Like, no, like 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 look at how people that do take to a spiritual path, how they become better people. And when I say better people, meaning they become better Christians and better mothers and better fathers and they become better workers and they become like that is makes us actually full as people and when we're full we can material things are actually that's like a cherry on top but you really get the deep the deepness in in you so uh, so until recently like a week and a half <laughs> recently regarding this yeah like like i was holding back but now i'm not and that's why i feel very um honored, blessed to be in this position. 
I also think that there's something about going out and preaching your truth and saying what it is that you're all about frees you. And I think that people see that and they dig that and they go, geez, I want to, I just want to be me. And it's cool that some people won't like it. And it's okay that some people don't want to have this conversation. Well, Look at the internet. You can pretty much watch whatever you want, right? You can listen to whatever you want now in this day, right? And, um, you know, I know that there's a lot of people that want, that are, that are living a life and they're thinking, why am I not happy? Just like I was. Why am I not happy? Why am I not happy? Let me ask you this, brother. Since you decided to fully move into your mission, hence the name change, yeah, well, the name no, the name the name actually was given to me last year by my spiritual master, Bhakti Mar Swami. But how long and, have you been using this name? Oh, since he gave it to me. Oh, but I see. But now, yes, I'm fully just using the name Nepal right. Das. Yes, just a week and a half ago, because up to this point, I wasn't. I was, I was, you know, I've always talked a spiritual message, but I was talking to it in a way that I knew was safe to a crowd that I know was safe. But now I'm speaking to 7 billion people. I want to talk to everyone. And, right, and, and that is like, oh, okay, there's a, at least a few billion that probably will not appreciate the message, <laughs> right? And there's definitely a, some people that will just downright oppose the idea that spiritual spiritual technologies, that yoga should be looked at as uh, part of the education curriculum, part of, of daily life, or at least some spiritual practice, if it's not directly yoga. But actually, yoga in the broader sense encompasses all spiritual practices because yoga is the... Um, is the um, essence of everything. When I say yoga, again, I'm not talking the physical postures. I'm talking the philosophy of having a loving relationship with the divine. And so that's the essence of, of when that becomes the essence too of our mention, that becomes the essence of our culture. Well, then our society has a real opportunity to get back to its natural state, its natural living. Um, Right now, we're very, you know, we're very much out of balance with nature, our lifestyles. We have so much disease. We have so much unhealthiness, you know, and let's just get like we have to get healthy again. And to get healthy, we have to look at health holistically. We cannot just look at health from a physical level anymore. We must look at it from a mental and spiritual level. And spiritual means is the soul being fulfilled? And to answer that question, you have to go to like if if I wanted to if I wanted to know about if I wanted to become a lawyer, I would have to go to law school. Seriously, if you want you'd to have know, to really right. want to be a lawyer. You have to some it's a dedication yeah, that you get. That's help. right. You want to be a you want to be a lawyer and a good one. A good one. You have to and be a good one even to pass the bar. Fully committed. Yeah, you're fully <laughs> you're right. committed. Right? You're in. Similarly, if you want to become spiritually realized, you actually have to go to a bona fide practice. And how do you tell? What is the how how do you tell if it's bona fide or not? Is your love of God increasing and your material fever decreasing? And that's going to be a process. It's not it might even take you lifetimes. I don't know. That's not the point. The point is, is that you get started now. Now, why wait a whole nother day? Why wait a whole nother, nother day to live at a way that we continue to live? And what are we doing? What are we doing as a society? What are we doing as a whole? These are the questions I ask myself. I'm only speaking of my own journey and going, do I want to spend my whole life doing, engaging in work that I don't find meaningful, um, you know, doing things that are not just in my overall best interest and in health? 
And so, you know, that's just just self-improvement really led me down to this path. And then eventually I became happier and happier. And then I realized there's a source of this happiness. And, uh, and that's where, you know, let's, let's get to that source. I'm glad you pronounced your name again. My apologies. Nakula Das. Is that Nakula. right? That's Nakula. right. You did tell me cool. When you were talking, sir, I put up a, a, a screen and to me it was the image of what you and I, but you especially in this last moment, have been talking about all night. It's this. It's gorgeous. Radical transformation. If God is, then it's about developing the love of God within to the level God is. Mm -hmm. If God is love, then it's about developing the love within yourself to the level God is. It's not rocket science. Notice the picture had fire and flames and passion. It was raw. and It's, it's just, you know, whatever it's going to take. It may take yeah. a thousand years, but I'm starting my first step towards that thousand years. Totally. Like we, right. we just, just the fact, like we have to see the fortune, the good fortune that we would come across a person that somehow awakens something within us that is eternal. When, when something like that is awakened in you, then you must follow it. And that is the business of the human being. This is the business. This is actually our, our actual business, right? Our actual business isn't, you know, whatever, oil or whatever thing that we're doing next in the world to make money. Our business isn't Facebook. Our, bus our business, our actual business in the human form of life is to discover the divine within you, discover God. You know, I would say discover Krishna. You might say discover Christ. You right? You know, you might say discover Allah. Discover God, and when you discover God, your life will be more joyful. Will be easier. Your your karmic debts will start to be paid, washed. Yes, sir. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, this you is, become yeah, important you to become know. you become protected, sheltered, under the wing. <laughs> oh my God, you be, you you begin to consciously move back into the divine fold. You're not not there. You're always there. It's a matter of whether you see how it's moving, so you can stay in the current and move with it. That's right, and um, you know, and and you know, this is um, this is important. Like we have to understand that everything in nature is happening because of some karmic reaction right action reaction so so birth and death are also happening in this way and we have to the real the real challenge is is actually the real spiritual process is how do we stop that cycle of birth and death how do we get back to eternal life the kingdom of god heaven right how do we get there so as i was mentioning if you want to be a lawyer you have to go to law school and study under lawyers if you want to become uh, realized you have to then follow those who are on the path of realization right and and that's that's like that's the guru principle you have to get around and associate with others that are actually going for that as well and then when you do that you, you it takes you forward it takes you forward you eventually your 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 process your practice gets deeper um, you know your your enthusiasm grows your joy your bliss grows and you know what happy people don't do happy people don't kill they don't rob they don't steal they make good choices um they they're not they're not overly consumeristic they're not buying destroying they're not because they're happy because they're fulfilled so when we say like oh Look how we're treating our planet, for instance. We should actually say, look how we're treating ourselves. We are part and parcel of the planet. So any way that we are treating the planet, it's the way we're treating ourselves. If we're willing to pollute the planet, we're polluting <coughs> ourselves. Because us and the planet are so interconnected and deeply linked. Us, the planet, the moon, the stars are so interconnected and deeply linked. When we see that we are part of a larger body, 
The Christ then body. Then the question. Yes. Well, yes. The Buddhic the body. The Christ the, body. The, the body whole, of light. The, 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 <laughs> yeah, that's right. The spiritual body, right? Like it's the, the, it's the, the body of, of life. Yeah. When we see that we are part and parcel of the body of life, then, then it only becomes natural that we should serve that. When I say serve it, meaning like align with it. Align, 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 trust, surrender to it. Let, let God's hand take over your life. Now, how do you do that? You have to connect or come into link, yoga. The word yoga means union. union. The word yoga does not mean Lululemon. God love Lululemon for spreading some yoga culture around. I don't have, I'm not, I, I like to poke fun, but I'm not totally hating either because either way, yoga culture has moved through the Western world. You know, you talked, you said at the beginning of the show, look at us, man. Like we're like, I'm, I was born in Brazil. I was raised in Canada, lived in Canada, grew up in a hip hop scene and environment. And now I got T-lock on my head and I'm chanting hard. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, and I'm loving it. And, it, and it's really, it, it's really, and I know the weirdness of it. I get that. Like, why? Oh my gosh. What is he? Like, what? Like, who, what's up with Nick? Like, I get that. What is up with Nick? And that's why I stayed in this quote unquote spiritual closet, Krishna closet for so long. But I was like, how could I actually say that I have love of God and be afraid to speak of love of God? If you love something, you say you would a mother would never a mother would say, I love I love my kids. A mother has no shame there. Why would I have shame around saying I love God? Because somebody else don't love God, because somebody else don't believe in God? Man. God been up in my life, you know, God's been doing great things in my life and he's been helping me become a better person and um, everything's improved in my life because of it. But by my, it's, it's when I change the goal of life from becoming rich or becoming whatever. And I said, maybe I just, maybe my goal is to just become a better person. And realizing that the world hasn't taught me how to do that. So I had to find a place to learn how to do that, right? And for me, yoga did it. Yoga's done it. And for me, I live, specifically as a Hare Krishna, we use, we use mantra meditation as our main practice, Yeah. right? So we chant a certain amount of mantras and prayers and mantras every day and kirtans, right? So we really use mantra. I personally in my life um, use also a physical yoga practice to keep myself uh, flexible, limber, healthy. Uh, it helps me with my back. I notice that, um, you know, if I don't do yoga, my back tends to hurt, right? Bad posture and, you know, whatever, right? Just usual shit, right? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, so the physical yoga practice really for me has helped me in that way. And I, and I, and you know, um, I know um, it's it's but the essence of yoga is is love it is love it's not the essence of yoga isn't if I can do the splits or not or if I can sit <laughs> in lotus or if I can you know stand on my head or something like this and the essence of yoga isn't CDs mystical powers you know you know anybody who goes through the yoga yoga process serious enough will start to develop their intuition will start to develop you know the mystical things and sometimes we get really attracted to those mystical things and that that actually doesn't keeps us still not in love right and ultimately we have to remember that that's the goal of yoga that's the goal of life the light like goal the life the goal of our life is to learn to love and that should be looked upon at all levels of society, in the workplace, in the home, especially in the home. My goodness, we have so many loveless homes. And I'm not hating or blaming. I'm saying you don't know how. I didn't know how. I have to <clears> learn. <throat> I'm learning, right? I'm learning. I'm teaching. I'm learning. I'm teaching, right? I started a community, just started it, called the Happy Yogis Community. Yeah, I wanted to uh, get into uh, the yoga, no, excuse me, what was it, the happy scam here shortly, if you want to continue. Okay. I want to answer a question for Cynthia 
months. She says, hey. Yanava. Hi, Cynthia. She says, Yanava, what is your daily practice? I come to state of consciousness. I plant my feet on the floor and I say, thank you, Lord, Yanava. Make me an instrument. And then I stand up. I sit in this chair, boot up my computer, and I let spirit move through however it chooses, be it I create a new song, be be it I create a website, be it I create a splash screen like you see this one for an upcoming interview. Service. I do those things that at a moment just makes me orgasm. That I would rather be not doing anything else. I don't want to do anything else. You Keith, would you like no, I don't want to do that. What would you I want to do this right here? <laughs> this is what I want to do. And I'm living in this place of ease, effortlessness, bliss, appreciation. I have realizations all the time. I get expanded into levels of consciousness I never thought possible. Because if I thought possible, I'd already be in that level of consciousness. And I get all these golden spiritual love nuggets down my throat. And I get these realizations. And I get to hang out with beautiful people and play with some of the world's best musicians. So forth. So to answer your question, my daily practice is to show up and show up fully. Hope that works for you, dear. Blessings. Mr. Nick Nakula. I like what you said, Nakula man. Nakula Am I allowed to make comments? Yeah, come on. Okay. Yeah, I like, I just, I just like, I love what you said. It's such a nice reminder about showing up fully in every moment and being like, that's what we would call being of service or being engaged. Like what I hear when you were describing that was like, you know, I get up, I do my prayers, I connect, right? You connect. And then you say, how do I be of service? And then you get to work with, with the directions that you are given through. For me, it comes through divine inspiration. It comes through like, okay, go say this, go write this, go oh, call that person, email that person. And I just take the orders and go. <laughs> take the orders. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, right, right. And there's a, there's a great humility in that. You know, Nick, you know, when we live this lifestyle for everyone, what is in that lifestyle is that everything you want lives in that and that lives in you so in order to get everything you want which is really not the things you think you want you really want the joy you want the bliss you want the elation you want the awareness that's it's all in that light is information light is the carrier like fiber optics it carries light information Nick let's talk about your happiness scam bro <laughs> so the happiness scam right. this is a, a video that uh, I'm going to be releasing shortly it'll be uh, on my website where yeah, as like an opt-in because I'm going to I'm going to use it <laughs> as a as a as a way to get your email so that I can you know the brother about, is honest you totally so I, he's so coming I, for you I've, yeah, I want your email <laughs> And the reason I want your email is one, I want you to watch this video called The Happiness Scam and learn why you've been scammed in your pursuit of happiness. You, like, and uh, it's a really cool video, it's really short. And then I want to like email you, you know, a couple times a week or something, keeping you inspired. Nick, do you have is a video stuff. available to be watched? No, that's the thing. We're actually okay. recording this. I only recorded it today. And we're actually as we're recording this, this is not not even available so the best way to get in touch with me is to you know if you're watching it on YouTube like just subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be announcing it and if you're on Facebook just connect with me on Facebook and then this will come out and you left my patreon account so basically what I've done is I've started a community called the happy yogis and the happy yogis is a is a is a mission that um, I'm going to be sharing my journey there in that mission, but in a in a universal way. Meaning, like right now, currently we have, um, you know, it, we just started it last week. We have three people, and one practices like Reiki, and she chants uh, the Hare Krishna mantra, the Maha Mantra. Uh, you know, one of our members does um, is a, is very much into to the Christian way. She goes to all the Christian events, promotes Jesus on her page. She's part of the Happy Yogi community. And we have somebody who uh, also does like Buddhist uh, Pema Chodron and, and chants mantras in that tradition. So you can see we have like 
three, four different people already in it, but all understand that the point is to connect with the divine. Um, I'll be teaching it from everything I'm learning in my journey. And then people who ultimately want to learn more specifically about Krishna consciousness, I've actually started something called the St. John Krishna Center. So they can look for that on Facebook and follow me. But if you follow me, just, you know, I can, you'll be able to connect to my other projects. So uh, point being is this, we started this, this yogi community. The community is a supportive place to be around other people who are on the spiritual path to share your journey. And every week I'll be giving classes on yoga philosophy. So it's for people who want to learn the essence of yoga philosophy. I'll be sharing recipes, wellness tips, lifestyles, everything from yoga philosophy within the happy yogi community. And you can join the community for five bucks a month or 20 bucks a month. And uh, depending on which tier, you just get a couple of things. And that's on my Patreon account. So if you like what you hear and you're thinking, geez, this is something that I've been looking for, then come join us. We're rocking. I, I just posted your web link in the forum, brother. We're on the same page. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Brother, what would you like to talk to talk about? I want to hear something that, you know, hanging out with one of your guy friends that you can be the, <laughs> the coolest. Yeah, yeah. What would you just like to, you know, have a beer over, brother? You know, kind of thing. What would you talk about? Hey, man, um, what about this thing that, you know, whatever? What would that be? Man, I got to be honest, man. I don't really talk about too much outside of, of, right. of what we're talking about right now. Dig it. Um, but um, but uh, I'm trying to think. Like, obviously, you know, you know, I like, oh, you know what I'm really into now is, is YouTube and how it works. Because I'm using YouTube um, – I, I've started a YouTube channel, right? And um, up to this point, um, I haven't really utilized YouTube. And so, um, you know, my wife Sarah, she's got, uh, she really digs like some of these YouTube guys, like uh, like um, these comedians and such. There's a particular guy named Gus Johnson, right? He's a funny dude, like not God conscious. I don't know if he's God conscious or not. I know nothing about him, but like, I'll just tell you that the humor is not, you know, uh, is very uh, not God conscious humor. It could be his God consciousness weaving all that together. <laughs> totally. I, I look at him and I see, because I see this, I see the source of his comedy is God. Like his personality is so attractive. He is very attractive. He's got great karma. Because an attractive personality is is uh, is a karmic reaction, according to Vedic, you know, and, and yoga philosophy, right? And so he's got a good karma, which is allowing him to to uh, be kind of uh, very attractive. He's got a very nice personality, and his comedy is very real, very funny. So I would, you know, that's like see what I'm sharing with, with you now is how I talk to my buddies. Hence, I don't really have a lot of friends. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing, but like, actually, one of the things I've struggled with in my own personal life as I've gone down the spiritual path is, is like, good relationships with guy friends. Um, I have one buddy who's, um, you know, we go on walks and stuff. He came on the last walk I did. We did a 60 kilometer. It was nice. So I do, do, do really long walks. My guru is known as the walking monk. And so I, I also walk, um, you know, as a practice. And... But 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 I found some really cool guys like online and such, right, to connect with. Um, but it's tough, you know, sometimes on this path, right? But that's why I also started the community, right, to, you know, bring some good people around. Bro, I'm really enjoying my time with you slowly but surely we're coming to the end. Yeah, man. Is there anything in particular you would like to leave us with, sir? Whatever that feels like a a powder keg of love and light. You've got this life here and now. There is, there is no guarantee, no matter what you believe about what happens to you after you die, this life is available for you when you are inside of a human form. Please understand how rare that is. In the human form, you'll experience Everything that the animals experience, eating, sleeping, defending, mating, all of these things. But in the human form, you can experience something that is not available there, which is actual eternal happiness and joy. And that's not just a, like a conceptual thing. It's a thing that's actually attainable through yoga. Not just the physical postures, but the lifestyle. And... 
If you want to learn as I learn, because I'm going to be sharing everything that I'm learning with the folks inside the Happy Yogi community, join me. Invitation to happiness and greater possibility towards ecstasy and bliss and all that. Bro, thank you for the ride, the glorious ride of light. <laughs> thank you, man. You I can really hang out anytime you like, bro. Appreciate thank you, brother. You. Blessings. Everyone, Nick Pereira also, Nakula's da, Nakula Doss, talked about my favorite stuff, exactly my favorite stuff. We are truly reflections of each other. I enjoy Nick. I've been knowing him for quite a few years now. He's solid, man. He is the dude. He doesn't jack around. He may jack around, but when it comes to making some business, he's real serious about it, just like me. When you live in that kind of fire, that kind of passion, the, the universe says, yes. I love you beyond measure. <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs>